Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we'll discuss about Spring Security. So in this video, we'll cover what is Spring Security, why we need Spring Security, how to add Spring Security in our Spring Boot and Spring Projects, and finally, how to customize our security. So we'll cover all these things. Without further delay, let's get started. So first we'll see what is Spring Security. So Spring Security is a customizable framework. You can use to secure your Java applications. So here we are adding this Spring Security for all the Spring and Spring Boot or Spring Data projects. So and also it provides multiple features like authentication, authorization and we can protect against common security vulnerabilities. So next why we need Spring Security. So one is the for authentication and authorization purpose. So what do you mean by authentication? So authentication means it will verify the identity of the users. And authorization means whether the authenticated person have permission to access certain resources or perform certain actions. And next reason is it will provide multiple security features like so using the Spring Security you can protect your applications from cross-site request forgery attacks as well as XSS attacks. So it will support various authentication methods including form based authentication, HTTP basic authentication, JWT and OAuth2 authentication. So it will support multiple various authentication mechanisms. And next one is for you can able to integrate with other frameworks also. So if your project is in Spring Boot or Spring Data or any Spring MVC, so if you want to integrate this uh, Spring Security with this project, you can able to integrate easily. So it will provide built-in support for integrating with popular authentication providers and services also. And you can able to customize this Spring Security based on your user or admin based on the role based authentication or if you want to perform any specific authentications you can able to customize this Spring Security mechanisms to meet your specific requirement to perform the authentication for the Spring projects. So and also, so it will provide best security practices. So it will offer secure defaults to help developers avoid common security issues. And finally, it is easy to use. So there is a use documentation is available. If you don't know how to add the security also, you can just go to the documentation and you can easily implement this Spring security in all the Spring projects. So these are all the some reasons why we need Spring security in our Spring projects. Now we'll see the practical session on this how to add the security on the Spring Boot projects. So Spring security it will provide multiple security mechanisms. One is for HTTP basic authentication, based authentication and JWT finally OAuth2. Okay. So we'll see one by one mechanisms how to add in our Spring Boot projects. So for that one first we'll create the Spring project from the Spring Initializer. So here is the Spring Initializer and we'll add the required dependencies and we'll create project. So I'm group ID I'm giving comda java codex. Project name is Spring Boot Security 
application. So here, this is the package name form dot Java codex. Now we will add the dependencies. One is for web, another one is for security, and another one is for Lamba. So first we'll perform basic authentication. After that, form based authentication. Then we'll move for advanced security concepts. Now we'll generate this project and import into IntelliJ ID. So I have imported project into IntelliJ ID. So if you see my palm.xml file, so here I'm using starter security and web and lambda. So these are all the three dependencies I have added. So first we'll create HTTP basic authentication. So for that one, we'll create one controller. Another package. And we'll create one class. So let's consider customer controller. Okay. So here is my customer controller, and we'll add one API for this request controller and request mapping by customer. Okay. So this is my API, and I will write one API to return message. Welcome to Spring Security Security session. Okay. So I have given one method and I have specified using annotation gate mapping. So this is my one API I have defined in the controller. Now we'll start this application. So already I added one dependency like Spring Security Start Array. So by this one, it will by default enable HTTP basic authentication. We'll see how it will perform. And also I need to change server port number. So I have changed my port number. And let me start this server. So I'm starting server now so if you see this uh, so server is started 9898 but if you observe this console here already one password is generated in the locks that is using generated security password is this so this is basic authentication okay so how to use this password so we have to go to the browser so here our api is http colon nine eight nine eight slash customer so here is my api so its username is the user password is the provided i have copied this password from this logs and i am mentioning into the website now if you are able to see we are able to access this api so if you want to perform same thing from the postman so you can come to the postman and uh, here so my api is 9898 and customer okay so here we need to specify the authentication if you see here we have the multiple authentication types so in this case we are using basic authentication so you need to select the basic authentication and username is the user and password we need to copy from the logs this is the password okay and you can try to hit this api now if you see the response welcome to spring security session okay so like this you can test this basic authentication using spring boot application so here we are not added any kind of configuration just we are added starter security in the form.xml file so by default it will enable the basic authentication okay now we'll override this basic authentication to form based authentication okay so for that one we need to add one extra configuration file into the browser so i'm creating one package like config i will stop this service now so here i will create one security security config file 
so whenever you are creating the security config so it will automatically override http basic authentication to this our security our own authentication so usually the before spring uh, 5.0 we need to use extends web security configure adapter now web security configure adapter is deprecated we need to use the filter method i will show you how to add those functionality in security config class so to save our time I have added this logic if you see here so here is our security config and here is the notation configuration we need to define and if you see here is the security filter chain so in the before pi 5.0 we need to use extend security configure adapter before 5.0 but now that is deprecated we need to use security filter chain and if you see the logic inside what we are using so here we are doing the authorized request you are giving the permission to all the apis having uris as a public for this one we are allowing directly we are not checking any authentication for these apis those apis which are having public okay so directly we are uh, allowing the other than public so other than public whatever the apis is having the different uri pattern then we need to apply authentication mechanism for that one and also here we are using user details and here is the role based authentication one is user another one is admin so this is the user having password as a password and this admin as a admin as a password okay and finally we are using in memory user details manager to check this particular user having valid credentials or not so here already we are using with default password encoder so this password encoder again it is not required so already with the it is password is in, encrypted only so in the previous version we need to add the password encoder explicitly okay so now what we need to do we need to create few more apis from the controller so here is my customer controller i will create few more apis for example here is a get mapping and i will give the access for public so the apis which are having public those apis will not require any authentication okay and another one i will give like private these are the Two different APIs. So I change get private message. So this is related to get private message, and I will give this is related to public message. Okay. So I have two get methods. One is for public. One is for private. I I will remove this one. So directly i'm giving public and private okay so if it is public we won't ask any kind of authentication if it is private we need to pass the authentication to access this api welcome to this is for private api here i will mention this is from public so here we are performing form based authentication okay so we'll try to restart this service so if you see our logs so application is started again 9898 to test this one so this is the controller this is the public okay so go to the browser and now we don't have the customer directly i'm having public so when i enter it see this is from public api so it is not asking any kind of credentials okay if you are try the private see now it is asking authentication so i am using if you are using if you want to log in as a user then user is the username and password is the 
password for the user now click this one so now you are able to access this api and we'll try to restart the service one more time and now we'll see the admins so we are validated through user so if you see here is the user user is the user username is the user password is a password for admin admin is the username password is the admin role is admin okay so you can so go to the http 8080 so localhost 9898 slash private so here is my private now i will try to log in with admin so admin and admin username is admin password is also admin okay so when i click on enter see again i am able to access this application okay I'm able to access either user or admin but you need to pass this correct credentials so this is like form based authentication so we have covered one uh, http basic authentication as well as form based authentication so in the next we'll see the jwt and worth to if this video is helpful for you please like share and subscribe my channel for more content